Okay, I just got another pack of the Sharpie water-based extra fine paint pens here. This is the pastel set, and as far as I know, this is the only way that these individual colors are sold in this pack. They might be sold individually, I'm not really quite sure, but I've only seen these in the pack. These have become a regular uh, medium in my repertoire of uh, scenic stamping. I use them on, I don't know, I'm guessing 80% of the scenes that I'm doing. And they're really great. Um, like I said, this is the second pack that I've um, purchased, and they last quite a while because they don't, I don't find that they clog up, and they last quite a while because of that non-clogging issue and um, the flow of the medium onto the paper. You pretty much use up the entire barrel of um, paint in here. This is a green right here that I ran out. I realized I ran out of. I thought it was clogged, but I realized, you know, I think this thing is just completely dry. So when you can get a full reservoir full of medium um, used up in any type of paint uh, pen like that or gel roller, that type of thing, if you're a crafter like I am and you've been using this type of media, um, these types of tools and media, or uh, whatever, um, over the years, you know how valuable that can be because these types of pens um, have a tendency of, uh, in the past, of clogging and not being, uh, you know, usable from, I don't know, the second or third usage on in some cases, okay? But with these ones right here, I've had really great luck with them so far. So far, so good. And as long as they haven't changed their manufacturing process, I would imagine um, these ones should be good for me um, as well. So I'll just open this green one here because that's the one that um, has gone dry on me. I would have thought it would be the blue here, but um, it's the green one here. So sometimes when I'm using these in my scenes, uh, some people have questions about... Um, if these are the oil or water-based ones, Sharpie does have, you know, a full line of um, permanent pens, of course, that we're all familiar with. But these are the paint pens, okay? They're not the permanent markers. So if you see extra fine permanent, we're talking about a different type of uh, product. So I don't know when Sharpie started coming out with paint pens, um, but they started kind of broadening their... Um, uh, I, I don't know, uh, their line of offerings, including going into different types of uh, markers, including the paint markers. Um, I'm guessing that the metallic um, kind of brush head markers kind of came along before this one. And that's another thing, too. These ones have this little plastic nib, plastic and metal nib right here. Sometimes you'll see a um, extra fine marker and they're talking about um, either the permanents okay or these other types of I don't know I don't know what they're used for but I, I keep seeing great for rock painting okay so it's this little felt head that's um, probably geared around you know using it on different types of maybe primarily non two-dimensional media. I'm not sure. It, you know, it says rocks and things like that. So if you see something like that, usually when you're purchasing things like this, um, they'll show you uh, what the nib looks like. So again, you know, it's it's not that little felt stubby nib, which is also extra fine from the descriptions that I've seen online. Okay, now this is one of those paint markers, and anytime you run into a paint marker, unlike a gel pen, type of roller ball, okay? Paint has to be mixed up in here, so um, you're mixing up the, um, the medium with the binder in there, okay? So the paint with the binder, uh, getting it nice and opaque, or as opaque as it can possibly be. And uh, you wanna do that quite a bit early on, okay, before the first usage, okay? Now, if you start drawing with it, it looks very translucent and see-through, okay? It's going to be that to some degree anyway, but you want it as opaque as possible, so you want to shake that up um, decently before you uh, use it for the first time, okay? All right, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. All right, now these 
all these different types of paint pens have this little trigger mechanism, okay? So let's see if I can push that in. See that? It's spring-loaded like that, okay? So what you want to do is you just want to push that in and get that ink to um, feed down the center of this um, nib here and to get that flowing, okay? And I'm just going to do that a few times. It's not really like pumping it. You can pump it a few times, but don't do it, you know, too much. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're releasing the, uh, you're opening up the, um, that uh, nib into the reservoir. And if you keep pumping it too much or you jam it like that, you know, you'll get this big blob of paint coming out of there and you'll just lose that, um, um, I don't know, that amount of ink or paint uh, onto your paper. And that's the big mistake a lot of people use, uh, make when using um, paint pens. You know, it kind of looks like it's jammed up or something, so they start triggering it right on the paper like this and opening and opening and open. In the meantime, it's coming down and coming down and coming down, where they only needed to really do it once, and then it just leaves a blob right onto their um, surface. So if you are triggering it, then do it on a blank piece of paper, but I can see it feed, it's feeding right now, okay? But look at that beautiful flow, and that looks pretty opaque to me. All right, now a lot of you who use um, light colored media on darker paper, let's see if this works on a glossy sheet of paper. Okay, there's not going to be any tooth to this, but let's see if this shows up. Um, marker that shows up beautifully and that's on a glossy piece of paper. So here's the thing that I like about paint pens over gel pens in certain circumstances, okay? Gel pens have that roller ball so as you're rolling it sometimes like that it's kind of skidding along the surface. Paint pens can be more opaque as well and the gel markers. Gel markers are really made pretty well these days. I mean, a lot. I bought a set of uh, uh, 360 of these, and um, they haven't jammed up on me yet. But they make the um, the media in there thinner these days, I believe, so that um, they don't clog up in here. I, I don't think I've ever used this pen before, and it's probably two or three years old at this point in time. So just using it for the first time, it works pretty good. But um, the gel rollers, for my usage too, like on a scene like this where I've applied a lot of alcohol markers and uh, pigment ink on, over the top of this, if I'm using a gel roller, that pigment ink on here kind of dries to a powdery surface, okay? So sometimes if I'm using a roller ball and applying different marks like this, okay? I have to get it flowing a little bit, so I'm rolling that ball, and sometimes I'm rolling up some media into the tip of a gel pen. Now, I can make do with that, and I can work around it. Sometimes I get it going like that, and if the gel pen starts clogging up, I just roll it a little bit, and it gets flowing again. But the nature of the paint pen is that you're not, you're not dealing with a rolling mechanism on here, so... This is just free feeding through this little hole in this nib here, so I can get these different types of marks on there. Now, I've already done a lot of gel pen marks on here. I mean, uh, paint pen marks on here. because so This is a, a scene that I did a, a week ago or two or something like that. But, um, you can see how this freely applies with no problems, okay? Now I'm guessing with this paint marker too, seeing that it works on um, this kind of glossy surface like that. Let me just test something just out of curiosity here. Here's a, a glass bottle. I don't know, this is probably a bad test, but I don't know, I'm just out of curiosity. Yeah, then see this is, this is even a water-based medium. Now I don't know how permanent this is, okay? This is working on glass. That looks pretty good to me. I'm sure it'll just wipe off, though, even if after it dries. But the fact that you can do that on um, any type of surface, seemingly, I don't know, I haven't tested it, 
the oil-based ones would probably be more permanent. Be, mar, uh, Sharpie does have their oil-based um, markers, and I plan on testing out some of those, especially the um, the white and the uh, the metallics, the gold and the silver. Um, it makes these a pretty good, uh, I don't know, candidate if you're thinking about um, kind of expanding your uh, your range of uh, this type of um, of a uh, tool. Uh, marker medium into your, uh, you know, your uh, list of supplies. I think they're pretty good. And again, um, it's one of those things. These ones, I think, you know, I haven't had these sitting around for two years without being used or something like that. I use them on a pretty regular basis. But the fact that this media in here, the binder and medium, the paint and, uh, I don't know, I guess in this case it would be water, um, can separate in here, but the fact that it has that kind of ball bearing mechanism, I think that you can have these sitting around for quite a long time, and you can just shake it up like that, and the fact that it has that little ball bearing in there should um, uh, mix that, uh, you know, the, the binder and medium back together again pretty um, efficiently to the point where it's flowing again with um, that smooth regularity and um, opacity uh, as your main um, kind of quality and uh, importance there. You know, it's not going to come out kind of like real watery and, uh, you know, the, the paint in there is not going to clog up the uh, the tips there, there. So anyway, that's my uh, kind of little review of that. Um, <laughs> The bottle and the uh, the glossy um, cardstock like that, being able to write like that without any kind of break in it, um, as far as the feed goes, that bodes pretty well for this type of uh, medium. I think they work great, and I don't know. I've always believed in the Sharpie brand as far as the uh, the products that they're turning out. This is not sponsored in any way. I just like to uh, kind of do a little review on the media that I really tend to like, and especially if it's tried and true. Like, like I said, this one right here, I used it up to completion to where it was completely empty. And it doesn't have like a really small reservoir. I was probably using my last set for a good, I don't know, maybe two years and on a pretty regular basis. So I don't know. To me, they're good stuff. All right. So if you have any questions or uh, any comments on uh, any of the other Sharpie markers, like have you tested out the, um, the oil-based ones? I'm kind of curious about that. There's a lot of reviews out there on places like uh, Amazon and whatnot, but uh, some of these um, types of reviews, I don't know. I don't know how much we can trust them. There's a lot of fake reviews out there by uh, competitors on various um, media out there. Oh, I used it once and it clogged up on me, you know, so I tossed, you know, I don't know. I don't know how much to believe, uh, you know, some of the reviews on some of the different products that I haven't tried before. Again, like the oil-based ones that I want to um, test out because I think they could be really good in terms of their opacity and, um, I don't know, different, just different types of qualities. I'm in real need of a, uh, a couple really good metallics that aren't going to clog on me and I can use them for a really long time. I really like just media that works. Okay, so thanks again for watching. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions or comments, please note them in the comment section below.